everybody! You're about to watch a really awesome movie review of a really brilliant movie called Barbarian. Uh, stay tuned. <laughs> hey everybody! Uh, I'm Julie Kerr, writer and director of the indie nerdy comedy Geeky Loves Punk. And you can totally check out my movie down below uh, at my website. Okay, and all my stuff is down below. So, and like, subscribe, all that jazz. Yeah, totally. Okay, <laughs> so... Um, I want to talk about it's actually November fifth, so but I so I really wanted to get this movie review uh, up before I need to go back to screenwriting. But uh, okay, so my Halloween movie definitely was a movie called Barbarian. My understanding is it's a huge hit on HBO Max. It's now streaming. I saw it in a theater and I thought I I, I had a really good time watching it. <laughs> Uh, I'll tell you why. This is a spoiler review. It's hard to talk about it without spoilers. Okay, so it's a really good movie and then um, and then I watched it again on streaming with my best friend on Mil uh, Milio. So he's in Virginia, I'm in California. So we just we just talked on the phone and we watched it together. And I, I enjoyed it again. So uh, I'm gonna tell you why Barbarian is like totally awesome. Okay. So, it's kind of late on a Saturday. It's not that late, but it's like 9.30, so I didn't look it up. Okay, but here's what I want to say is um, Barbarian is extremely well casted. That's the first thing is that I want to start with, like, the actors in the, in, the, uh, in, the, in the movie are, like, really, really well casted. So there's the character AJ, who's played by Justin Long, and most people know he knew who he is because he he's had a pretty good career, I would say. And then there's Billy Skarsgård, I think that's right, where she, he's like a legend as It, and then, but like the original Tim Curry who played It, like he was legendary, so uh, yeah, anyway. So, uh, so Billy Skarsgård is great as the clown in It, and then he's in this. And then there's a new actress, uh, unfortunately I didn't look up her name and I could look it up. I looked it up on my phone. Okay, so there's a character named Tess. She's the lead, and she's played by Georgina Campbell. I've never seen her in anything. Uh, I'm going to put her picture up here. Um, she's phenomenal in this movie, and I feel like if these kind of movies could get nominated for, like, Oscars, like, I really think they should submit, like, straight up, they should submit Georgina Campbell uh, for Barbarian, like, at least submit her for an Oscar, because, like, why not? Because she's so good in this. Like, the first 20 minutes of the movie, she's, like, it's kind of got a romantic comedy vibe, kind of. And then, so she plays that really well, and then she has to go into the layers of horror, and then she has to be, like, empathetic and compassionate. Like, she's really good in this movie. So, like, I think if the... Mark, whoever does this, but if the barbarian people are watching, like, at least submit her for an Oscar nomination. Maybe that's completely ridiculous, and these kind of movies don't get that kind of, like, recognition, really, usually, but she's so good. Like, she's fantastically casted, so she's great. So, um, yes, okay. So the first thing that makes this movie good is it's great acting. Justin Long, Billy Skarsgård, uh, Georgina Campbell. And then, okay, so this is the spoiler review. Oh, also, two, uh, my favorite film reviewers are Fish Jelly Movie Reviews. It's uh, two gay guys who know a lot about movies and they're married to each other. And I, they just do really good movie reviews and I really tr trust their taste in movies. So they recommended Barbarian, but they said, go in blind, and they're right. So watch the movie first before any spoilers. Like, don't watch the movie if you know the spoilers. I think it's a better experience if you don't know, uh, if you don't know the, the spoilers. So having said that, here's your chance to totally bail and go watch it. Okay, so I'm about to talk about spoilers. So... So the movie is very well casted, and I want to start with that because the second thing I love about the movie Barbarian is it brings up good issues. And what I want to say with that is Barbarian is directed by, oh no, <laughs> I will Google Barbarian. 
He's great. I've been, I watched a bunch of Zach Kreger. Okay. So it was directed by Zach Kreger. Yay for phones. Okay. So I've been watching like podcasts and interviews with Zach because the first thing I'm going to say since I'm an indie filmmaker is I could never direct something like this for so many reasons, but I appreciate that Zach Kreger, who I think is pretty much a cisgendered straight white guy, and that's awesome, <laughs> but I'm, I really appreciate that he made this movie because I could, if I were to make a movie like this as a woman, just as a woman, I feel like people would be like, you're an angry woman, bah, and, and I, uh, I, uh, that's not true, I, in my 20s I was angry, in my 30s, I, blah, 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 whatever, but it's like, I couldn't make this movie, I feel like you'd get this too much, but, so I appreciate that Zach made this movie, because like, he can kind of get away with making this movie where I haven't seen anyone be like, well, you're an angry man. So, and he doesn't seem like angry in any of his podcasts or, or any of the interviews I've been watching. Not that I want him to be angry, but I just, I love how this movie explains like what it's like to be a woman in the world sometimes, you know? Because like, yeah, and I want to be optimistic. Of course, there's amazing things about being a woman and for sure. But <laughs> this is a horror film, so in the context of a horror film, I appreciate that Zach wrote this, this script and made it and that Tess, uh, Georgina Campbell does such a good job playing this role because it, there's so many, you just see her do so many things that women, I as a woman, were conditioned to do that, like making sure the men are okay. Like the thing about horror movies, when I watched it with Emilio, it's like, the characters have never seen a horror movie, so there's a part where she has to go to, basically in the movie, there's a, it's basically an Airbnb, and then she discovers like this creepy basement, and there's like a tunnel, and like anyone who's seen a horror movie knows like, nope, <laughs> and you just, you leave, you leave immediately, you go somewhere, you got a gas, you got a car full of gas, like you go, but she, you know, Tess, the lead character, she's never seen a horror film, so of course she goes down, uh, she goes down the weird tunnel and that kind of thing, and well, and then we, the audience, we get a really great movie. Okay, but like, there's a part where she has to, there's the two lead character, there's two men in the movie where she does go down where they decide to go down, and she keeps wanting to save them and help them and be a caretaker, and like, that's so like accurate of what it's like to be a woman. I think there's so many, so many cultures where it's like, as a woman, it's like, no, 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 let's make sure everyone's okay. Is everyone okay now? Great. Okay, now I'll take care of myself. And so that those little subtleties are really, really nice. Um, and that, that, that that's just the subtleties. But um, when things get really gnarly, <laughs> it's highly entertaining. It's very entertaining if you're going to sit down and watch a horror film, if you're in the mood for a horror film. When I was in college, I took a class, uh, uh, it was called American Horror, and we, we studied like books and movies, and we studied them like they were Shakespeare, and this is before like, there's all these like, really good video essays on YouTube, or like, this is, the internet was just becoming a thing. So it was just cool, we would watch like Texas Chainsaw Massacre, or Psycho, or episodes of like, The Twilight Zone, or we read Carrie by Stephen King, which is brilliant. Yeah, we would just like study like um, different, uh, it was just cool. It was just cool to like, like, oh, we watch Carrie just to talk about, okay, but what's happening? What's the layers? That kind of thing. And so, uh, so that is to say like horror films can say something, um, you know, and, and hey, I, also just, if you just want to watch a fun slasher film, that's cool too. You know what I'm saying? But, but I like that. The, the other thing we learned, I remember the professor saying, like, the idea behind horror is just, like, and I'm saying this as an optimist, sometimes sometimes people are awesome and amazing, and that's great. Um, and you see that in, like, romantic comedies or that kind of thing. But then sometimes, like, life is awful. <laughs> it's awful, and there's monsters, and it's terrible, and you have to fight, right? And that's, what, that's the kind of stuff that horror can... Um, can explore, right? So, so yeah, so, yeah, so there's basically, like, there's, like, a house, and then there's, like, uh, 
there's like a creepy tunnel and then we come to find out that in the creepy tunnel there's like this giant strong mutant lady uh she's cool <laughs> she's apparently uh played by a dude i was like oh well good acting because I, I never would have known i just thought they found like a really tall lady you know and and tall ladies are great so so anyway so all the actors are good it, even the guy playing the giant mutant lady okay <laughs> so you come to find out there's a giant mutant lady uh there's a character named uh oh the first half hour there's like uh it, it's tess she goes to an airbnb and there's been some sort of mistake where she has to share it with billy skarsgård and the first 20 minutes is pretty interesting because you're not sure where it's going to go so it's like you know he plays it really well too because it's like um and honestly it <laughs> honestly like i if there's i don't know whatever like airbnbs like by myself have never looked when i've looked at them they've never looked safe so i i just prefer to stay in a hotel if i'm if i'm by myself um so They've never been my cup of tea unless it's like a group of people, but okay. Also, I grew up in the country, so cities, whatever, cities can seem intimidating, whatever. So, so anyway, she, there's a mistake. She's there with Billy Skarsgård, and he's like, you know, it's raining, you can stay. And I think what they play really well is like, where's this gonna go? Like, is he dangerous? Is he scary? Is he fine? Is he normal? And you come to find out, like, basically, he is a good guy overall. Um, but he does go down the tunnel and, you know, he gets hurt. She, she, she goes down the tunnel just to try to help him and save him and that kind of thing. Um, the other thing is there's things in the first 20 minutes that I think is really good because you can see like, she's like, she's like sussing it all out. Like for me personally, to be honest, if it's late at night and there's a dude in a house that I don't know him that well, like it depends. Like, I guess I, if I was feeling him, I'd be like, okay, this is probably fine. But probably a lot of me would just drive away. <laughs> okay, I was just like, eh, I, there's got to be a hotel somewhere. Okay. But like, you know, he... But what I like about the first half hour is just like with Billy Skarsgård, it's like, to me, like, I saw some interviews with the director and the director was saying like, even Billy's being kind of inappropriate. But I was like, I don't think Billy's being inappropriate. I forget his character's name. <laughs> but I just think he's being kind of awkward. And I think... Uh, and that's okay, but it's like, I think what I like that that explores is like, Billy Skarsgård's character is, it's like the, he's being awkward, but the awkwardness is hard to like interpret, like, is it dangerous awkward, or is it just a dude who, who's in a weird situation and doesn't know what to say, and we come to find out he's a good guy overall, but I think the way they played that was really well. And the other scene that was like, the part of that that was quote unquote triggering and it wasn't, it wasn't that triggering. But I just know since like I'm pretty much gay and I predominantly date women, it's just like, uh, this is a different video. Women are confusing. Like sometimes they communicate straightforwardly. Sometimes they don't. It's just, it's just bananas. And so I'm currently happily single because it's just like, I love women and I'm a woman and I'm a feminist and all that stuff. I just know like it is it, sometimes women just want hookups and so and so romance is like inappropriate. Uh, I it's, maybe it's a California thing, but then but then other women want more romance and then other women want something in the middle and the, but the, some of them are good at being straightforward about what they want. Some of them are not. It's like a Rubik's cube. <laughs> it's like what okay so dating can be a pain in the ass it can be awesome and it can be a pain in the ass so the part the scene that I found quote-unquote triggering was that Tess goes into the bathroom and she comes out and Billy Billy Skarsgård there his character not not the actor but his character had there, someone left a bottle of wine as like a gift with a ribbon on it so he has a bottle of wine and he has two empty glasses there and he hasn't opened the wine he's like you know I didn't open the wine because I thought you might want to watch me, like, open the wine to make sure he's not, like, sleazy or kind of roofy her. Like, he's awkward. <laughs> I think he's awkward. That scene, though, I got to tell you, as, like, as, like, a queer woman, I was also trying to think, like, would I feel comfortable as, like, a queer woman in 
a house with like a straight lady? What if the straight lady is like homophobic? What if the straight lady is crazy? What if I just twiddle my thumbs and the straight lady is like, oh my God, you're coming on to me. Like, <laughs> like I was like, I, I like, I just, I would, I like this scenario did, I was like, oh my God, what would, I don't even know what I would do. Like I wouldn't, so what Billy did, I would never do this as a queer woman if I'm like in a house with, a sh whatever. He like, it, so he sets it up and to me it looks sort of romantic and to me it sort of looks like inappropriate. It's not the end of the world cause it's not, it's just wine glasses and a bottle of wine that he doesn't open. But it's like, I was like, mm, even that, like, I would never do that if I just met a woman ever and I don't know her sexual orientation, I don't know anything about her, like, I wouldn't even do that. <laughs> so, uh, and I just wouldn't, and I'm harmless, I'm totally, totally, totally harmless, but you don't know, like, what if this woman's crazy? Because <laughs> some women, not all, but some are crazy. So, uh, they're not, <laughs> they're not safe. They're not safe to make out. They're not safe. They're not safe. Okay, some women, just psychologically speaking. So, so anyway, so the part where he has the wine bottle, uh, even that, I was like, mm, I think that's too much. I thought it was too much, but, like, not saying he's, like, some evil dude. It's just, like, they just met and they're meeting together as an accident. But the other thing about that part is Billy Skarsgård like uh, turns it around and turns out to be like very like, he does end up being charming and a good guy and a, and a, and a, and a just like a good guy. And what I like about the first half hour is like, you're just not sure like where the movie's gonna go. And so even when they do end up <laughs> drinking the bottle of wine, he's like, you can watch me open it, you know, to make sure I don't roofie you. <laughs> That's awful, by the way. Uh, I had a relative who was roofied and uh, it's, it, this is gonna go on YouTube, who was R-A-P-E-D'd. And that's awful, but I, for me, my belief system is that guy's gonna totally burn in hell, so, mm, you know, but, okay, yeah, but, 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 but it's just awkward, like, the, Billy's being kind of awkward, but then he ends up being charming and that kind of thing. So the first hour, half hour is really good, okay, and then, like, totally, Billy Skarsgård gets killed, sorry, <laughs> he totally gets killed, this is the spoiler review. But then, um, but then it goes to, it cuts to AJ, a guy played by Justin Long, and I'm gonna say AJ, and AJ's like an actor, and he just got a, he just got like a, uh, uh, a pilot, a pilot, uh, like for a TV show, and la la la, but we come to find out like pretty quickly in meeting him that he's been accused of rape and sexual assault by one of his cast members, and he keeps saying like, the thing I like about that part is like, because it's Justin Long who seems very lovable. <laughs> I like Justin Long. Okay, so because it's played by Justin Long, I was like, no way, he didn't do it, he didn't do it. So like, we, we see he is very frustrated, he is really basically frustrated, he's trying to get his finances together because he has to get a lawyer and that kind of thing. And that's why he ends up having to go to Detroit to where the house, the Airbnb is. Um, but then we cut to him, we get to the part where he's talking to his friend in Detroit and his friend's like, hey, like, you know, what really happened, la la la. And then AJ ends up confessing that basically, yeah, he did rape her and like, he's a horrible person, basically. Um, the other thing, he, he's awful, he's terrible, he's awful. Okay, so that was surprising. I was like, because it is played by Justin Long, I was like, oh shit, like I didn't see that coming that he actually did it. So, so we see just, Justin, I'm sorry, AJ. AJ's basically just a selfish asshole. And we even see him, like he picks up Tessa's computer. When I watch this with Emilio, he picks up Tessa's computer, and it's a laptop. And then he just tosses it. Uh, by tossing it, uh, I, I remember when he did that, and me, me and Emilio were like, hey, <laughs> <laughs> you're gonna break her computer <laughs> like he's just like he's such an asshole the whole movie he is funny like it is entertaining if you will but he's an asshole so anyway um they go down to the basement blah 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 and then in the basement not only is there a mutant lady and we come to find out that actually the mutant lady she's not that bad uh it turns out that like and i didn't emilio didn't know this but i told him like this is loosely based on truth like 
There was some guy, he had this secret room in his basement where he did kidnap women and he kept them there and he got them pregnant and uh, he was horrible. He was horrible, horrible, terrible person. Okay, so the, and, and then Millie was like, there was actually a dude who did this. I was like, yeah, like, he, there's a guy who had a secret room in his basement. I forget his name. You can just Google it if you want to, but okay. So, but we come to find out that, like, the mutant lady's not the worst person in this weird elaborate basement thing. It's actually some dude who, um, the, some crazy dude, and he's older, and, like, he has all these VHS tapes. And basically, we come to find out, oh, the movie's not graphic. I really appreciate that the movie's not graphic in the sense that it, it is scary, but it, 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 it it alludes to the horror, the real horror. So he has all this VHS types and they're all labeled and it's basically labeled of all the women he had victimized, basically that he had, this is YouTube, so the women he had R-A-P-E-D'd. So, and it's all these little VHS tapes. And it's AJ who discovers like the really horrible serial murder, horrible guy. And we come to find out that the mutant lady is like his daughter but he's like but she's a copy of a copy of a copy basically like he he just uh, inside uh, sort of he just keeps sleep like he sleeps with one woman and then he sleeps with that woman's once that once the kid is grown up it's a horror film it's pretty awful okay but anyway you can watch it to see what that means copy of a copy but okay but there's this part here's where the movie I do think is brilliant because the idea the question is who's the real barbarian so it, the the mutant lady isn't really a barbarian she does kill Billy Skarsgård but she's just a victim of her circumstances AJ is a barbarian he's awful and there's this part where AJ is like he puts in one of the VHS tapes and it's all off camera so we don't have to see it but AJ sees it. And he turns to the guy, the monster guy who's in bed, you know, the serial killer. He's like, what is wrong with you? Why would you do this? But it's a good scene because it's just like, yeah, this guy's a barbarian. He's horrible because he's a serial murderer and, and he hurts women. But it's like, so that guy's a barbarian. But so is AJ because AJ, <laughs> AJ is awful. It's a horror film. <laughs> It's it's not a it's not a romantic comedy. It's not Notting Hill, but it's a great movie. And Barbarian's great. So is Notting Hill, but different genres. Okay. So, but the irony when AJ's like, "How could you do this?" is like, AJ, but you did it. So, I mean, you only did it. Hopefully, you only did it once, but you did it. So you're you're both barbarians. So it's a good question. So finally, you know, whatever AJ and Tess, they get out of this like crazy basement. It's a very elaborate basement thingy. And the mutant lady is chasing after them because the mutant lady wants them to be her babies. Like, she's like, bit, 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 bit. <laughs> Good acting with the, whoever did that. So she's calling them bit, bit. And she doesn't really use full sentences, and that's okay. So the mutant, so she's trying to, like, save... She, she wants her babies back. She considers them her babies, and yeah. So she chases after Tess and AJ. And for, like, a second... You know, AJ for two seconds is like, I'm a bad person. Like, I'm an asshole. I'm a bad person. And I was worried about that because, like, I was worried, like, oh, are they going to make AJ sympathetic? Because, like, you know, so far they've shown him to just be an asshole. He accidentally shoots Tess. Like, he's just, he's a terrible person. And I was like, ooh, careful movie because it's like, there are, in my opinion, since we're talking about horror films, there's assholes out there who don't feel remorse. And it's dangerous. Like, if you watch... The Jeffrey Dahmer series on Netflix, and it is problematic. It is exploitive. Like that's a whole other ball of whatever can of worms. But the thing about if you watch the Jeffrey, like I'm not necessarily recommending it because it is disturbing and like why does it exist? But I did watch it. If you watch the Dahmer series on Netflix, the fictional thing, it's like, and I think this is accurate. Jeffrey Dahmer did not feel any remorse. Like whatever's happening with his brain, he felt no remorse. He just got a kick out of yeah. So, killing people. He killed people. So, <laughs> he was a serial killer. So, so that's the thing, like, with AJ, when they're, like, when they had him self-reflect for maybe, like, two or three seconds, I was, like, careful, because statistically, there are people in the world who don't feel remorse, and that's why you gotta do something with them, but they don't feel remorse, which is why you have to keep the nice people safe and protected from the people who, who are mean and don't feel remorse. 
like AJ, he doesn't feel, he, so anyway, so he feels remorse for like maybe three seconds. He's like, oh man, I'm an asshole. Like I'm a bad person. I have to change, right? And he, so it's four seconds of remorse. Oh, that's the other thing, like Tess, like she's assuming that AJ is this great guy because she keeps trying to help him too. And like, she doesn't know that he's basically a rapist. <laughs> I was like, Tess, <laughs> stop, <laughs> Tess, just let him go. Just, just. Stop saving, like, well, at least Billy Scargo is a good guy. Stop trying to save AJ. We're fine. <laughs> the world's fine without him. Okay, in the context of a horror film. So, but anyway, so, you know, for five seconds, AJ, like, is thinking to himself. And then he, um, but then the mutant lady comes in, and she starts, like, attacking and being bananas, because she's, you know. So AJ, like, starts running up a tower and he's leaving Tess who he accidentally shot and Tess keeps saying like wait wait AJ's very self-serving he's an asshole he's a terrible person like he's not waiting for her he's very selfish and that's the irony like in the context of this film the world would be better if he just wasn't in it like he's he doesn't care about making the world a better place he's a terrible person so he runs up this like these stairs he's you know Tess is trying to keep up with them because they're trying to run from the mutant lady finally the mutant lady runs up this like runs up these stairs and they're on this sort of like terrorist thing and AJ you know it, he's he's a horrible person AJ takes Tess and throws her off the banister because he's a horrible human being. So then Tess jumps off, no, no, no yeah, so ja Tess is falling and then the mean mutant lady jumps off and like catches her. So, the because that's her bibi, that's her bibi. So mutant lady catches her and then um, saves her life basically. So then AJ, so I like that he did that because it's like, no, 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 like, you know, this is right after the self-reflection. Like, no, 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 AJ's a selfish asshole. <laughs> so, and now he's an attempted murderer. So AJ comes down to like, I mean, I don't know what's happening here. He's like, he tell, he goes down to check on Tess. So I don't know what's going on there. Does he care about her? I don't know. But he goes to check on Tess and Tess is still alive. Thank God. So Tess is still alive. So Tess gets up and, and AJ's like, you know, you fell, you fell. And it's like, no, AJ, you threw her. Okay, but then Mutant Lady gets up, and this is highly entertaining in the context of a horror film. Mutant Lady gets up, and she's angry because AJ hurt her bibi. So <laughs> Tess is her baby, like she considers Tess her baby, even though Tess is a grown adult woman. So the Mutant Lady takes her thumbs, and she has these big, big, like strong hands. She takes her thumbs and she digs them into, now I had to look away because it's very gross. I was like, Ugh! but she digs her thumbs into AJ's eyeballs and pokes his eyeballs out. <laughs> In the context of a horror film, it's very entertaining. And then she rips his head, in, I'm sorry, she rips his head in half. Again, entertaining in the context of, of, of a horror film. He totally deserves it. He deserves it in the context of a horror film because he's a terrible person. Okay, so so then so then the mutant lady's like, well, that's done. And then she goes back to Tess and she's like, bit, 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 bit. And she starts pointing to the house because she wants to take Tess back to the house to be her bit, bit. And it's like, you know, and then Tess, and this, this is why I think uh, Miss Campbell... Georgina Campbell should be nominated for an Oscar, like, straight up. She, like, with, to me, I saw empathy. Like, with all the empathy in the world and a little bit of horror, she's like, no, no, I can't go back. I, I'm so, I, I can't go back. And then that's where, like, Mutant Lady's, like, pointing. She's like, bip, bip, bip. She wants her to be her baby. So then Tess, and the thing you do see, because, like, kudos to the actor playing the mutant lady like straight up because you can see like the love in her eyes like that's her baby so it's like the mutant lady isn't the barbarian it's aj and the mean the mean serial killer guy so tess takes her gun and she points she she puts it at a uh, mutant lady's face and she's like i'm sorry i can't go back and she she shoots her in the face and unfortunately mutant lady has to pass she dies and you feel bad for her but it's like you know and then it ends with Tess, like, walking away. And someone pointed out that, like, 
she might be the first or one of the first it's called final girl so in horror films the girl or the woman who like survives like the the ultimate final girl is jamie lee curtis i believe but yeah so she survives the um the like uh you know like the <laughs> okay a final girl is in horror films the woman who survives at the end of the movie called the final girl so apparently Tess is like maybe one of the first women of color final girls which is just really cool that's just cherry on top as far as like the movie being awesome so the movie's really awesome um yeah hopefully you watched it and then you're here to talk about it <laughs> but I, it's just highly entertaining it's very well done it's a really good horror film okay so 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 it it, it brings up good issues like um uh, as far as like you know, what it's like to be a woman. Because, like, when I watch it with Emilio and Tess, she survived and she's, walked, she's walking away from all of it. Because um, I said, as a joke, I was like, and that's what it's like to be a woman. <laughs> and Emilio started laughing because that's kind of what it's like to be a woman in the context of a horror film. Because, as you see in the movie, so many men just won't listen to Tess. Um, they just, she, Tess is like, look, there's like a mutant lady down there, like it's scary, like come on, and people think she's crazy, Billy Skarsgård doesn't believe her, he's like, she's like, there's this weird like thing, and it's just the whole movie, men won't listen to her, so she, you know, she has to kind of fight for her own survival, and she gets a little help from the mutant lady, <laughs> who saves her from the horrible man, AJ. Okay, so the last thing I want to say was just that, like, I do find this movie to be, um, Oh, so last thing, the movie is cathartic. So I watched Saturday Night Live and they they were talking about the word catharsis and I hate to be that person, but they actually, the, the definition of catharsis, they, the, their definition was incorrect. Sorry, I'm being that person and that sucks, but okay, here's the thing. So catharsis is from um, Aristotle's Poetics. It's a book that Aristotle wrote. Okay, I totally have it on my bookshelf, but I um, couldn't find it. But okay, so, oh, but it, Aristotle Poetics is a book Aristotle wrote that's all, it's giving instructions on how to write dramas. And at the time he was talking about plays because he's from a long time ago. Um, but when he talks about catharsis, Catharsis, catharsis when you're writing like plays or movies or whatever, screenplays, whatever. So catharsis is just like any kind of expression of emotion that provides any kind of release, uh, release and relief for the audience. So uh, catharsis is like, um, like if you watch a comedy and you laugh, then that's catharsis. If you watch a horror film and you get scary, that is scared, that's catharsis. You know, if you watch, like, uh, a, uh, an action film and you get kind of excited, like, that's also catharsis. And so, yeah, so catharsis is, like, any kind of expression of, like, authentic emotion. And, yeah, when you, what Aristotle was saying, and this is still true today for screenwriters, excuse me. So, yeah, what Aristotle was saying was just that um, if you sit down to write a screenplay in any genre, you want the audience to feel something when they're watching it. They want to feel something. And if you walk away feeling an emotion from watching stuff, then you have experienced some kind of catharsis. Or if you watch a drama, usually dramas is when you can cry, right? So it's actually catharsis is the expression of any emotion, not just sadness. Like sadness, anger, excitement, joy, like whatever. So anyway, this movie is very cathartic as a horror film. I talked about this in, in my podcast and like... Um, uh, a little bit and this is like a uh, uh <laughs> sorry okay uh what I want to say is like this is kind of serious so like trigger warning what I'm about to say so trigger warning five four three two one giving you a chance to bail okay when I was in my 20s I was in two I was at a at two different parties and I was in a situation it was the same guy but what I oh this isn't going to be that dramatic but it's going to be like a smidgen dramatic but oh, that is to say I was at a party in my 20s, two different parties, where I n knew that I was in a room with a rapist. So, and I, yeah, hopefully YouTube doesn't flag me or whatever for saying that word. But, like, uh, I knew that I was in a room with a rapist, so to speak. It was, it was like a group party thingy, whatever. I didn't know he would be there, but, and I want to get into details, but two different parties. Uh, it was the same guy, but, like, I knew for a fact the guy was... A rapist or I believed my friend who said yeah anyway long story but um 
what I was gonna say is like in real life because I'm a in real life I'm like a civilized kind awesome person so like I can't like gouge a rapist's eyes out with my thumbs. I'm not a giant mutant lady. So, you know, in real life, when you're around someone who's awful, and like basically I've cultivated a life where I'm not around horrible people, but in real life, you can't, you you know, I it was my friend who invited me to the party, two different parties where he was there, and I was like, stop doing this, you know, whatever. Anyway, long story, but whatever. Like, stop inviting me, but... Uh, and he wanted to be my friend, and his, that part was weird too, whatever. He was a weird dude, not a good guy. Okay. But in real life, you can't really do that. In real life, you have to be civilized and kind and la la la, la you know what I mean? Because I'm not a giant mutant lady. So, but, but with a, with a movie like Barbarian, like, yeah, it's entertaining. <laughs> Sorry. It's cathartic, if you will. It is cathartic that, like, the, and this is, Tales of the Crypt was good at this too, like, the the people who deserve to get it, they really get it, like, in Tales of the Crypt, same deal with Barbarian, like, AJ deserves everything that happens to him, <laughs> by the time he gets killed, he's an attempted murderer, awful, hor horrible person, so it is cathartic in the context of a horror film to watch this. Yes, so, um, so I find the movie very cathartic, I, that's where, like, this is where, like, if you, you're, it, some people don't give respect to the horror genre, but you can do really cool stuff in the hor in, in horror films. So I think Barbarian shows that that you can do really cool things. Barbarian or um, you know Jordan Peele's movies. So for sure. So Barbarian's a really great movie. I totally recommend it. Uh, it's really awesome. Uh, I think you I, <laughs> I think you'll enjoy it if you like horror films. The last thing I saw a couple of podcasts where and this is really sweet where. Some um, straight guys, like, they're, I, I get it, like, it, like, here's the thing, if, like, this, I mean, the movie's, kudos to the director, but in a movie like this, like, if I directed it because I'm a woman, I would have made, I would have created some other male character who's, like, a good person, <laughs> but Bill, Billy Skarsgård overall ends up being a good guy, um, but, uh, but I, I saw some reviews where, men were like, uh, and I, I totally appreciate this, men were like, you couldn't have, you know, one guy who's cool? And I was like, yeah, I totally get that, like, complaint. But I do think, or, or some guys were like, D did Billy Skarsgård really have to die? And I was like, yeah, because the mutant lady kills Billy Skarsgård. And I was like, yeah, that's legit. Like, because, like, you end up liking Billy Skarsgård's character. He ends up being very charming and a good guy. So it's like, it does suck that he gets killed, but... So yeah, for me, if I would have made this, I would have made some dude character who's like a good person. <laughs> but um, but you know that's what the character just that's what the director decided. He wrote and directed it, so that's the, the route he decided to go. Um, okay, but yeah, if any, if having said that, Barbarian I think is highly entertaining. I totally recommend it, and it's a really good movie. So straight up, like great movie. Okay, all right. Thanks for watching. Y'all are awesome. Uh, that was my Halloween movie, Barbarian. Oh. If you want to learn more about me, you can check out my website. It's uh, www.juliecurstudios.com. You can join my email list. You get discounts to my movie that I made. I made a indie. I made a ninety-minute like indie movie. It's super funny. Um, you can get discounts on all the stuff on my website. So you can totally join my email list for free, and you get a uh, a mini course uh, on productive creativity, like how to how to finish your creative projects faster. Uh, if you join my email list, you get that for free. Okay, so um, yeah, you can check me out at Uh Link below. Thank you so much. You can like, subscribe, all of the things, all the YouTube things. Thank you so much for watching. Barbarian is such a great movie. I totally recommend it. Uh, it's just really good. <laughs> okay, uh, talk to y'all later. Uh, bye.